So we are we are now streaming live. Hey. Hey. <laughs> we made it. Yes, so we I just want to thank everyone who's tuning in. What I want you to do now is share this um, stream on your page so that more and more people can see it. We have a dynamic group of youth that is on tonight and I am so honored to be able to talk to them and hear all about them. I'm sharing too. So I want to share on my page. So That's while you're exactly watching, well. please hit that share button so that everybody can see what is going on. I am doing it. Join us. Me too. Yeah, see? Awesome. So mm -hmm. I just hit that share button. Okay, let me try and do the same. All right. Yeah. We'll be starting momentarily, but what I need for everyone to do who's watching, just hit that share button. Yes. Our panelists, they're hitting the share button. We had a little technical difficulty last Friday, but we are here and the show must go on. <laughs> so let me know when you all are ready after you hit that share. Okay, we're all good? Yep. Okay, so good evening, everyone. I am Assemblywoman Angela V. McKnight. I am the assembly person for the 31st District that consists of Jersey City and Bayonne. And I am here tonight to talk about the power of the youth. Yes. We have a dynamic group from the Black Diaspora Club from McNair High School here in Jersey City. And we, are, we also have the co-founder of Everyday, Everything Jersey City, Francine is with us. And thank you so much for hosting this particular event on, normally is on Fridays, but today <laughs> it's on Monday. And we are ready to go. So is everyone ready? Yes. Yep. Okay. So we're gonna start off with some introductions. You know who I am. Now I would like to kick it off with Francine. Francine, please tell the people who you are, what sure. you do, and then we'll <laughs> kick it off with the youth. Okay, well, hi everyone. I love to see your beautiful faces. My name is Francine McHale. I'm with everythingjerseycity.com. Everythingjerseycity.com is a .com. You could also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Um, my husband and I created Everything Jersey City to show the positive side of Jersey City. Too much we get, you know, our news and we hear about bad stories going on all around us. And I think it really messes with your psyche. And we want to create a place where we could show all the good news. And when you talk about the good news, you find all the good people in Jersey City. And that's how we found Angela. Angela, you know, was doing great things during you know, COVID, she's always doing great things, but we found her <laughs> and um, we, we were able to like come together with her. And that one time um, we kind of went in and volunteered and it was just a great time with just so many different people feeding hungry people in Jersey City. So um, we <clears throat> created this space and we wanted to support you guys in talking about Black Lives Matter, because Black Lives Matter. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Adrienne? Hi, my name is Adriana. My name is Adriana Williams. I'm 18. I'm a senior at McNair, graduating class of 2020, and I'm the president of the Black Diaspora Club. Um, I've been the president only for this senior year. I've been gifted the role from the previous president. Um, I have, a, I, this year we took a different route with our club in terms of trying, we've tried to separate ourselves from McNair, our high school, by making ourselves a city organization. And we've been doing a lot of activism work. So that's me, Adriana, will probably learn more about me with the rest of the <laughs> talk. And I also want to um, talk about my friend, Jen Dark. She is not able to make it today, but she is also a member of the Black Diaspora Club. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Chance? Hi, everyone. My name is Chance Chandler. I'm the vice president of the Black Diaspora Club. Uh, like Adriana said, appointed by our uh, previous executive officers. 
Uh, I'm 18 years old and I'm a senior at McNair Academic High School. And two days from now, I will be a graduate and a rising college freshman that will be attending Howard University in the fall. Um, okay, uh, I've lived in Jersey City all my life with my mother and I have family in just about every corner of the city. Honestly, just look pretty hard. You'll find somebody with the last name Chandler. Um, <laughs> I love music, singing, dancing, and would love to work in the music industry through however life takes me. Nice. Eileen? Hi, my name is Eileen Sanchez. I am a senior rising graduate at McNair Academic High School. I'll be attending Rutgers, New Brunswick in the fall uh, to major in human resources management. And I'm a first generation Mexican American. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> okay, no problem. Nice, nice. Samaj. Hi, everyone. I'm Samaj, Samaj McLeod, uh, also a senior at McNair, class of 2020. Mm -hmm. In the fall, I'll be attending NJCU University in Jersey City, so staying close to home. I'm into photography, modeling, music, sports, so yeah, that's a bit about me. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Do you mind if I say where I'm going as well? Yes. I didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't <laughs> let the, I didn't let the folks know. <laughs> um, Adriana, again, graduating from McNair. Um, I'm going to be a freshman at the illustrious Howard University with my vice president, Chance, and I will be majoring in international business, and I will be continuing on my road as a businesswoman and an activist as well. All right. See, we have some dynamic youth yes. here with us tonight. So I, I just want to say congratulations to all of you. I know you will be graduating in a couple of days. I want you to enjoy your summer and your next chapter, which will be um, college. I know you're going to do a phenomenal job. So congratulations. And to everyone that's watching, please put in the comments a congratulations. To, to these dynamic youth. Yes. So I want to hear um, about the Black Diaspora Club. Can you just share some things with all of us about how it became or um, why did you join this club? Okay, so our club, okay, so our club was made in 20. 16 our club was made in 2016 when chance and when all of us were freshmen um the club was made by a small group of seniors so the graduate class of um 2016 because the um racial abuse and discrimination in McNair got to such heights that they they wanted a place that they wanted a safe space within the school where they could talk about their experiences and truly feel heard because when they went to administration they did not feel heard they were encouraged by um a teacher our only black teacher at the time and she's she unfortunately is not at the school anymore but our only black teacher at the time she encouraged them to create the black diaspora club and with the help of one of our um other teachers who advised the club at the time um created the black diaspora club at the time it was called african-american culture club yep. right yep so mm -hmm. the club was um called african-american culture club it's gone through name changes mm -hmm. because you know as we know black is black and african-american are not um synonymous african-american mm -hmm. means people who came into this country 400 years ago black means you can be black from the Dominican Republic, Barbados, where I'm from, mm -hmm. uh, wherever in the world you can be black, you know, mm -hmm. racially. So we changed it to the black diaspora as in the diaspora of people from Africa. We're all, but we're all still connected. So the club is not only for black students, it's meant for anybody in the school who wants to have an insight on black culture, mm -hmm. black struggle, black happiness, black love. And that's what the, that's what the, um, club was is now is for you know it's, it's grown over the years mm -hmm. and we have meetings every friday and we also um do our our annual black culture celebration in february to celebrate black history month oh, okay that's nice that's nice so chance chance he, he's a little frozen yeah and eileen disappeared yeah too. and eileen mm -hmm. disappeared 
So Samaj, why <laughs> we'll hopefully they'll come back on. So Chance and Eileen, if you can like maybe move a little bit just to see um, about your reception, but we're still we're still streaming. Yeah. Um, so Samaj, why did you um, join the club? So I personally became a member of the club this year. And uh, for a while, personally, I kind of, um, I didn't really, um, I was kind of focused on other things. I didn't exactly, um, like every Friday, I was kind of doing something else. And Adriana has always been so um, <laughs> persistent to me on kind of joining and being a part of it and joining the movement. And so this year, I kind of, I was in the grips with myself and I was like, uh, it's time for me to join and time for me to support. And so that's what I did. And some one of my best choices to date because I've been nothing but welcomed and it's it's a great it's a great opportunity. <laughs> well, well thank you for joining. And Chance, why did you join? Um, so at first I was like uh pretty spotty with my attendance uh to the Black Diaspora Club. Uh <laughs> For the most part, at first, I was only there for, like Adriana said, our Black cultural assemblies that we would have annually, because knowing me, I'm very much a performer. I love to just get on stage and do my thing. But I started to realize what the club was actually about and what the club was actually for. Mm -hmm. And I started to, you know, put in my time and my effort towards all the things that the club did. And um, after that, I just, I was appointed the vice president and uh, as much as a responsibility it was, I'm glad that I was able to fulfill my job as the vice president. And uh, this year, I think we did a really good job, me and Adriana and the officers as well, uh, leading the club into a new direction this year. Yes, perfect, perfect. Can I just, yeah. I just want to say, you know, my daughter went to McNair and she was in the African American Culture Club. She was one of the originals because oh yes yeah they started the club and they used to come to my house all the time <laughs> and we would cook and we would talk and I I started learning a lot about just different things and she's gone on to um, Boston University has done some symposiums um, during black history and she has her own blog woke curls if you want to ever follow that <laughs> but yeah she's very active and it all started there and really from people not hearing her so nice, nice plug mom yeah <laughs> <laughs> so, so thank you so much for you know letting us know about why you joined this club mm -hmm. now i, I want to move on and talk about how i became aware of the black diaspora club i'm going to be full transparent uh, with everyone um, here and everyone that's watching I did not um, know about the club, um, but I heard about the club when I saw a flyer for the protest in the wake of George's death. And I was searching and, re and, and researching and I'm like, wow, this is right here in Jersey City. Um, so when George, when George Floyd passed away, I was angry. I was disheartened. My water just, overflowed and I needed like an outlet just to express my feelings about what transpired and what I saw on national TV. I would like for you all to share um, your feelings about what happened to, um, to George Floyd. I mean, I could start just, um, you know, it was, it was a kick in the gut and you know, just to watch, you know, one man put a knee on a man's neck and not let up for nearly nine minutes. It said that this man on top, I'm better than you somehow. And it, it rocked me. I, you know, I'm older than you guys. So I've been through a lot of this, you know, I, I remember when camcorders were out and they caught Rodney King beaten. And, you know, this, this is unbelievable that this is still happening. 
And it's a kick in the gut to all of us, to all humans, not just black, all humans. Thank you, thank you. And um, Samaj, as, a, as an African-American um, male, and you are a teenager and you go outside, um, can you share your thoughts about what transpired and what you saw? Yeah, so that was, um, that was gonna be the kind of starting point for me was that um, mm. the fact that as an African-American male, it's like, this could be me, this could happen to me. And I think that was the biggest thing is kind of just, I think the big word I would use is awakening. Mm. Um, kind of just the fact that it not only woke me up, but I feel like it woke a lot of the world up kind of just to see what's actually going on and what's being allowed and how things are transpiring. And I think that's what's leading things to and leading people to put kind of their thoughts and actions in motion and make a change mm -hmm. because it's such, it's such an event that kind of causes you to stop and say, is this really the world I'm living in and the world mm -hmm. that I'm going to continue to live in and just kind of allow it. So I think that's the biggest thing is just awakening. It's that's what it's all about for me. Thank you. Chance. Um, so uh, in my generation, a lot of us get our information from social media. So when I found out about George Floyd's uh, murder, uh, I was just looking through Twitter and Twitter is like my escape from the real world. Like I don't expect to see things that I see in the real world very often on Twitter. And I was just scrolling and I saw the video and, you know, it, it, it really like impact, like impacted me like personally. And, you know, being that uh, a lot of the things that we see today can be recorded you have to also remember that that probably wasn't the only thing, the only time that happened that day, that week, that month, that year. Not everything is recorded and put on the internet for everyone to see. So we all knew behind the scenes that this was happening very, very often. But just seeing it like with my own eyes, it it hurt me and it made me realize that, you know, even if I don't see things like this often, it still means that I'm very much a target to the public eye. And it scares me going forward in life because, you know, I, I don't know if anything I can do can prevent me from ending up in a situation like that. Like a lot of innocent men, and I mean innocent men, are just slaughtered by the police. And, you know, as much as you could say, uh, it doesn't happen often. It really does. And you, everyone needs to open their eyes and realize that. Okay. Um, Adriana, um, I would like to hear from you as well as in reference to Brianna Teller, who, you know, is, who, you know, is an African-American woman who was killed as well. I um, actually was going to bring her up like if I was if I was asked to speak about George Floyd, I was definitely going to bring up Brianna. See, Taylor. we're here. We're here. Yeah. Um, I, I really, there's been a lot of, um, emotions in regard, in regards to, um, George Floyd's death and Breonna Taylor's death and obviously all the black young men and women and people killed by the police. But with Breonna Taylor in particular, it's just really painful because it just, it just, really remind it like her death in particular really let me know that we truly don't have to do anything you know because she was a, a medic who worked in two hospitals treating COVID-19 patients right and mm -hmm. she she worked in two hospitals she worked day in and day out to make sure that she was a real she was really protecting and serving she was a real hero to America and she goes home to sleep in her bed to wake up the next day to continue to work for this country and she is murdered in her sleep she is shot eight times in her sleep like like it it just it's just really painful because it lets you me know that even in a global pandemic <laughs> even in a global pandemic we are not safe 
even in our ho- own homes, we lock our doors. We're like, thank goodness I made it without being murdered out there today. Thank goodness I made it home safe and sound. And I wasn't murdered. The police can break into your home legally and just shoot you and kill you. And it's legal because her murderers, her, her murderers have not been arrested. Yeah. You know? Government sanctioned murders. Mm of men who were not in in uniform. They came in her house in jeans, in plain clothes, had a no knock search warrant saying that they could, they don't have to knock. They can just open somebody's door to look for a drug bust when the person that they were looking for was already in jail. The person that they were looking for was already in jail. Brianna Taylor was killed for a mistake, right? Oh, whoops, we thought that the person that we were looking for lived here. When the person that they were looking for lived 10 blocks away and was already arrested and in jail. Mm. And it's the same thing with George Floyd, a mistake. He was killed over a mistake. They thought the person at the store he was patronizing thought that he gave in a fraudulent 20 and called the police. And after he was dead, they checked the 20 again and it was a real 20. Mm. We, we, we are mer- like, it just, it, it breaks my heart. And I've cried a lot of tears for Breonna Taylor. Mm-hmm. I have cried a lot of tears for Breonna Taylor because, because when I think about her and I think about how the police bought her name. So when you search up Breonna Taylor, you see the police department, you go to BreonnaTaylor.com. Like, it's just, it's just plain evil. Yeah. It's plain, it's simple terms despicable mm-hmm. when i learned that they bought her name so <laughs> i i was sobbing i i sobbed and i think i cried mm-hmm. for an hour two hours i just couldn't stop crying i'm about to start crying right now mm-hmm. thinking about it yeah. because imagine being brianna taylor's family or friends and searching her up and seeing her murderers wow yeah imagine i it it being black on this earth does not feel real sometimes no. because they bought her name they bought her name <laughs> and made it a police a directory to the police the police of her city the police that killed her and won't arrest the police who killed her yeah yeah i know it's it's hard and the words I can't even explain, you know, what, what transpired, but I just know it's wrong. And we all, it's enough, enough is enough. And just like Samad said, an awakening. Mm-hmm. If this, if these two incidents, just as well as Trayvon Martin, just as well as Eric Gardner, um, Sandra Bland and, and so many others, yeah. how many more we need for the world to be awakened. So thank you so much for sharing. Um, Eileen, I would like to hear from you um, in reference, like how did you feel about the death of George Floyd as well as uh, Breonna Teller? Um, In terms of that, I feel like, like growing up in Jersey City, like I've always seen my friends, like my black friends, like in pain all the time. And, you know, I think the first time I remember seeing something like that was Trayvon Martin. I think, I don't remember how old I was, but I was young. And I remember seeing all my friends hurt and the fact that to this day, like Trayvon never got like justice. And to think that years later, it's still an ongoing issue in this country. And it's just like, it angers me because like, it just makes you wonder like how many more people have to die in order for there to be actual change in this country. And it also like scares me because like, like I, I don't know what it's like to be in that position but I'm scared for my friends. I'm scared for their families. I'm scared for their communities. Mm-hmm. And, you know, but at the same time, I feel like it just inspires you to like keep being there for your friends, you know, keep doing what you can as a person, like as a non-Black person of color, like doing what I can to help, even though there's not much, you know, I could still do certain things. And, um, well, I, I, mean, like I just... want to say to you, <laughs> that you are doing something, you have done something. So don't, don't say not much, you are doing something. 
just by you sharing your thoughts tonight, mm -hmm. you're doing something. So I just want, I just want to let you know that. Okay. So don't feel that you're not doing anything or you're not mm -hmm. doing much because you are, you are a piece of the make a difference puzzle. Mm -hmm. Everybody that's on this panel, you all are a piece of the make a difference puzzle right. and you only can do what you can do. And when we do things together, it explodes, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so that's what I want to let you know, okay? So you could finish your thought, but I just had to interject and let you know that. <laughs> so yeah, I think it's just like, um, it kind of just reminds you that, you know, we should all, I'm not sure how to word it, but it's just like being there for people, helping any way you can, you know, educating others to join the movement as well. Okay. So I want to know, how did the protest come about? Like, how, what happened that you decided to say, all right, we're in this, we're going to do a protest and then have thousands and thousands of people <laughs> attend. So I want to hear, <laughs> everybody wants to hear. Yeah. <laughs> are you, are you going to tell it, Adri, or should I? <laughs> Adriana, you want to, you want to share? Okay. I want a chance to start the story and I can finish it. Okay, well, chance. Oh, okay, you just okay, okay I'll start more. it. <laughs> I'll start it. So uh, it was like 10 o'clock at night on uh, like late May, like some day in late May. And I'm just on my phone and I get a text message from Adriana and she says, hey. And I didn't know what to respond back. So I just respond with the waving emoji. And then she responds to that with, I, I would like to put together a protest in Jersey City. And we had never put together a protest before. This is <laughs> unlike anything we've ever done before. So I, in my mind, I'm like, what is she talking about, a protest? And then just like without even thinking after that, I just typed, what do we need to do to set it up? And then Adri, if you wanna take the story from there. So he said, what is it that we need to do to set it up? So you already had him. <laughs> That's that and have chance is the the definition of the best. Mm -hmm. If you were to search up amazing vice president, chance is <laughs> would be in that place, okay? Because chance is awesome. Any I have a lot of crazy ideas. And he <laughs> always pulls them together. All I have to do is say the word and chance is like, okay, well, what do we gotta do? <laughs> you know? So, <laughs> I'm going to give a little bit of background and then continue from where Chance went. So I had been going to protests every single day and there was a lot of emotions building in me, right? At protests, at some protests, I screamed. At some protests, I cried. At some protests, I, I just had to sit down and watch. And I, I, some protests, I was quiet the whole time and just walked with people and marched with people, you know? Like, while well, everyone around me is screaming and carrying mm -hmm. on. Like some, the, the, there's different emotions that t overtake me. And, mm -hmm. and I guess the, the week and a half of continuous protest had had gotten to me to a point where I was like, where in, in my heart of hearts, I was like, I want to do my part as well, right? Mm. I've always been a leader, always, my whole life. I've always been a leader. Wow. And, and participating in the protest made me sit down and think and go, I can do it. And I don't need a lot of people to come out. I just need to do it because I have something that I want to say. I have something that I want to prove. And we live in Jersey City, which is the most diverse city in America. Why, why is Jersey City so quiet, right? So I had gone to, I had gone to um, Miss Pamela Johnson's protest, and which who is with, um, who is the president or the leader of um, Jersey City? anti-violence coalition movement. So uh, or here in Jersey City that, that also fights this sort of thing, an activism group. And I also went to um, Black Men United's who's the, the founder is Nevin. Mm -hmm. And I went to his protest as well. So I went to two protests in Jersey City and I knew that it was possible, right? And I, and I, and I wanted to make big waves. So I texted um, Chance, I said, well, what do we have to do? No, no, no. I said, I want to do a protest. He said, well, what do we have to do? And 
support. We and all I we had no resources. We had no money. We had, we had nothing. <laughs> we just had an idea. So we made a flyer, posted the flyer, saying that it's gonna happen, right? Because that's all you can really do. Like. <laughs> And it's going to happen on this date at this time. And people started reaching out. Can I help? Can I help? Can I help? We can bring water. We can bring snacks. Oh, I, I, I can be a, I can be a medic. I can help whoever wow. needs like help. <laughs> can I help? Can I help? Can I help? And, and it just really at points brought tears to my eyes. And I'm not an emotional person, but I've talked about crying a lot in this, <laughs> in this Zoom call, in this live. <laughs> but I, um, I'm not an emotional person. I don't really cry a lot, but th- with, with these sort of things, I do. I act, I really truly do. So like it brought it brought a little bit of a moisture to my eyes thinking about how people of Jersey City and New Jersey are coming together to want to help me, right? Mm. And there was at some point I looked at the, the the flyer that we had shared and I'd seen that it passed over a thousand shares. Wow. Right. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I wonder if that means that a thousand people are gonna come. <laughs> And then I was like, oh, no, like, that just means that people are, sh- I, bet, I bet all the flyers get that many shares, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I bet all the flyers get that many shares, you know, I'm just, I, so I didn't think anything of it. Um, and um, at NEV's, uh, at Black Men United's protest, I think there were good, like, like, 300 people, right? And then at Miss Pam's protest, there was a thousand people who came out. So I was like, okay, well, I wonder how many people are going to come. And to know that over 4,500 people came, that was amazing. Listen, first of all, Adriana, when you said, I am a leader, (laughs) because that that is an affirmation. I am a leader. So you looked in the mirror or on your cell phone or you're just there. And you said, I am a leader. You have the wits. No one told you that you were a leader. You know that you are a leader. And and you only thing you had to do was tell your crew, hey, this is what I want to do. And you didn't have any resources, but you did it. And that is how things happen. You just speak it into existence. And if people believe you and they know that you're genuine, the help will come. So that is what happened. How, like, can you just, would you, do you want to give any shout out to like groups who, who help you, who yeah. help you, your team? I do <laughs> want to give a big shout out to my, um, my brother, Nevin, who is the founder of Black Men United. When we had no, we went, I went to his, um, I went to his protest and that was my first time meeting him in person. I didn't even really know him, but I mm-hmm. went to his protest and, I, and at the end, um, we, we w- marched back to Berry Lane from the, from the South side precinct, from the Greenville precinct. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I, I did a poem and then I started walking home and he ran up to me and he caught up and we started talking and I told him that I said, like, he said, is there anything that I need to help you with? Like, what's, what's up? Like, like, and I said, well, can we borrow your megaphones? Because <laughs> don't have megaphones like it would be really greatly appreciated he goes well you can't borrow these megaphones because we like they aren't ours right we Mm -hmm. borrowed them but what's your cash app and he sent me a hundred dollars wow wow said we're family (laughs) take this money hold this money and get yourself what you need for the protest right and i was shocked (laughs) he was a stranger to me we that was our first time ever meeting or ever speaking he said nice no, you're my sister. We're family. Here's a hundred dollars. Wow. Like that's the sort of thing you don't forget. That's the yeah. sort of that's the way you make like like he is my brother, and he always every day a grand rising family. What's good? Like, are you okay? You need anything, Adri? It's just like he's awesome. I love Nev and Miss. P- <laughs> you say you had no resources, but you had your voice. Yes. And you rallied the troops, and yes. that's what needed to happen. And you see, you. And when you do that, you find your brother and your sister to the left, to the right, and we all come together for that cause. Absolutely. Big shout out to Ms. Pamela Johnson, the leader of Jersey City Anti-Violence Coalition Movement. That is that is my auntie, that is my sister, that is my queen, whatever you want to call it. I love her so much. She is the most amazing woman. I have so much love for her. She has helped me a lot and taught me a lot. And con- she, she connects me with so many people i went to, so we um black diaspora club anti-violence coalition jersey city and black men united led the ocean avenue cleanup on saturday 
Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. And at the end, we we marched. I mean, we didn't march, but we cleaned up all of Ocean Ave, and we made it to um, Maya Angelou School. Yeah. And we there's a um, Brenda's. I don't know if y'all know the Soul Food yes. Restaurant. Mm-hmm. Brenda's right mm-hmm. there. We all stopped there, and we and we pra- patronized her restaurant. And what oh. we, that was our that was our goal. It's like we're gonna clean up ocean, half of or as this much of Ocean Ave, and we're gonna patronize a black owned business. Mm-hmm. So we all sat down and ate some good food. And Miss Pam, Miss Pam is what I call her. Miss Pam um, mm-hmm. introduced me to so many people and made n- n- basically networks for me, <laughs> you know, and just said like and kept putting my put like she t- holds my name in the highest regard and is always saying such positive things about me and introducing me with such positive. I didn't, yeah, I love her. And one more, actually, two more, two more people I want to give. Go that. ahead, go ahead. Okay, then Miss <laughs> Michelle, Miss Michelle, she is the most beautiful woman. I love her so much. She, um, she um, was at the Ocean Avenue cleanup, and I met her, and she is amazing. And Miss Michelle Massey, love her so 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 much. She's the best, and she's she's. I just have the best mentors like you guys don't understand <laughs> I have the best mentors that she's amazing and then the um jersey city um what is it called uh mutual solidarity solidarity and mutual aid jersey city mm-hmm. there i there i think they're they're a group of people from Jersey City who help activism groups, right? So how they started was at, during they they created right when the COVID nineteen stuff hit, and they mm-hmm. wanted to service families in Greenville who did not have resources. So they mm-hmm. did delivery to different families in Greenville, and then after the de- um, the murder of George Floyd, not the death, but the murder of George Floyd. Yeah and everything popped off with the movement, they were like, okay, well now we have to shift our focus and we have to be right here. And so they've been helping a bunch of activism groups and we are blessed to be one of the activism groups that they decide to give their love and help and support to. That's awesome, thanks. Thanks, everybody. So, oh, no, <laughs> welcome, this is, the, this is the platform, you know, for you to share. So Samaj, I wanna hear, at the protests, when you saw 4,000 plus people <laughs> what came to your mind? What did you, how did you feel about what you all just put together? And I think Samaj is, um, I think he's frozen. So yeah, we'll come back to out. him. So we'll, um, let's start off with Eileen and then we'll go to Chance. Um, at first I felt really nervous because um, like, I'm not really that much of a public speaker. Like I must admit, I'm pretty shy. So I get ner- I got really nervous and I had gotten there late because um, Adriana had told all the speakers to get there around two, but I couldn't make it that early. And I got there just as Adriana was speaking. So I wasn't even able to practice with my microphone. And I remember when I got up, the microphone fell and it made like a loud noise and I just felt really embarrassed and it like had already messed me up. But after like, because um, Adriana started it off, and she spoke like very confidently. So it kind of like boosted me up, like saying like, you know, if she could do it, you know, I could do it. And I messed up a couple of times, but I'm happy that I got like my words out and like what I had to say. So that's good. Yeah. That's good chance. Uh, 4,500 people. I, the number still like blows my mind to, yeah. this, to this minute, 4,500. <laughs> Um, When we were up there on the city hall steps and I was just looking out, you know, like Adriana said, uh, you know, we were expecting maybe uh, from those a thousand shares, like half those a thousand shares were uh, actually people who were going to show up. So when we saw all those people, it 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 did make me a little nervous Mm because in my performer mindset, this is the biggest audience I've ever had to perform in front of. But um, uh, after we like after I saw that we were all on one accord, like we were all Mm -hmm. thinking the same thing, we were all in the same mindset. I didn't feel as nervous because, you know, these are all people who want to see each other, you know, like win and succeed, Uh, especially when we have to promote this message of Black Lives Matter and everyone was just thinking the same thing. So it, it called me a little bit. And once I got up to the microphone and I like uh, rallied with a few chants, 
um, all my nervousness just went away and I was completely calm after that. And it just awakened this like almost fire in me. Like I felt even more passionate <laughs> after I got off the microphone. And uh, as, as much as the big crowd made me nervous, it also made me very confident. Nice, thanks. Samaj, um, I don't know if you heard the question. I did not hear the question. Uh, so uh, we wanna hear from you. We wanna know like when you saw the 4,500 plus people in the, you know, out in front of City Hall, and you all did that, what, what were you feeling? Um, well, to start, it was a lot of people. Um, I was definitely nervous um, in some sort, but I think, again, I kind of, a word I would say is comfortable. Mm -hmm. I felt comfortable because um, I knew that along with the people on stage that were supporting me, I had 4,500 other people supporting me and wanting to hear what I had to say and was ready to hear my message and learn and support. So I think that's what made things a lot easier for me, it was kind of in my head. It's like, I wasn't coming out saying a message that I knew wasn't gonna be received or was gonna kind of have a bad reaction. I, I knew I was confident in what I was saying because I knew the amount of support that I had around me and in front of me. So yeah, I definitely, I felt nervous, but I was very comfortable because of the support there. Nice, nice. And Adriana, you <laughs> kicked you you kicked it off. I know, I kicked you, it off. The black power, I saw you. Yes. <laughs> I kicked it off. And um I definitely ended it as well. <laughs> <laughs> So um, I, w I definitely am going to keep this short, unlike my three hour <laughs> at the end of the protest. Um, I, I'm going to say powerful. It was very powerful because because I, I can say this now. I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. I really just got goosebumps. Now I know what 4,500 plus people sound like in unity. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Can you say that again? Can you say I, that again? <laughs> I know what 4,500 plus people sound like in unity. Like it, like to hear our voices bouncing off the walls of downtown. Mm -hmm. Like it was, it was powerful. I, I felt people were listening to me, you know, like, do you know what it's like to talk for three hours and 4,500 people? <laughs> are looking at you like say something more <laughs> going like like people are saying like like you you what your words are power what you're saying is the truth what you're saying is needed like it, it I felt very very powerful I felt like I could change the world that's what I felt like can. And well you, you can <laughs> and you started to right yes. with 4,500 plus people <laughs> the black diaspora club changed Jersey City. Yes. Right? You have. You 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 truly <laughs> have. So I want to hear, and I know everyone else wants to hear, what is next for the club? And and what are you what are you working on? So I'm gonna load this question up. What are you working on? What's next? And how can we get your fellow youth involved? Because yeah. the, you all are the future. So we need to rally behind you on the side of you you know, right next to you, but you need more of you because this generation, your generation, you have no fear. <laughs> yeah. And just keep in mind, you know, activism um, starts from not, not necessarily with the bullhorn. It started, you know, small with your club yes. and you're, you're making little strides, but there are people who want to come alongside you. And that's why we want to have, have this platform. There are people asking, they want to know what can we do to help, you know, drive this message forward. And, you know, after the activism is over, I mean, after like the protests are over, we need to keep on keeping on. So what exactly. we need to do. And we need to know your, your, your um, cash app, all that, because we need to be dumping <laughs> in some money to yeah. continue to help you. And I'm going to say it loud. I'm willing to make a donation. I want to make a donation. So Me put too. it in the chat so we can do that donation I tonight. Got it. All right. <laughs> yeah. 
All right, yes. now you can answer the question. <laughs> Vice President got it. <laughs> so, um, mm -hmm. while Chance is typing in our payment information into the Facebook <laughs> live chat, um, I'm gonna talk about what our next steps are. So we have a protest that we're leading tomorrow um, at City Hall, 4 p.m. in conjunction with um, Black Men United and Jersey City Anti-Violence Coalition Movement. We do these protests every Tuesday. We started last Tuesday was our first one and we're trying to make it weekly. Um, at tomorrow's protest, we're going to, I'm, I'm going to use my time to speak to talk about the fact that we need to all be tuned into tomorrow city council meeting. There is a city council meeting in Jersey City tomorrow Zoom call. We all need to be tuned in. We all need to go online and search and type in our information so we can all speak and represent our city. I know we all have something to say to our council members. So we need to definitely use our voices. Um, other than that, Juneteenth, whoop, whoop, whoop. Yes. Juneteenth is oh. this Friday. For those of you who do not know, Juneteenth is African American Freedom Day here in America. So that I know that we like to call it, you know, like Black Liberation, da da da. So I don't like calling it Black Liberation because we're not liberated. One and two, it's not a holiday for Black people. It's a holiday for African American people. My people in Barbados were not freed from America. This is an African American holiday though black people of all cultures can celebrate we need to make sure that we're honoring african-american culture and history and putting our, shedding our love onto african-american people so yeah. the black diaspora club and a ton of other organizations are coming together to have a block celebration on mlk from bayview to kearney kearney and we we're gonna turn up and what's the time? What's the time? You got to let people know the time. From 12 to 5. And we're going to have, um, we're going to have um, food. We're going to have black owned businesses to patronize. We're going to have, we're going to have music. We're going to have, we're going to talk. We're going to be, we're going to start politically educating people. We're going to let people know what's good. What, what we need yeah. to be reading. We need to be reading books and we're going to let people know that they need to be reading books. So it's going to be yes. good. Okay, anyone else want to chime in on that? Um, I just wanted to um, put out there about, so on Friday, we, as the Black Diaspora Club, we had a meeting over on um, 147. And we talked about Black trauma, Black weariness, mm -hmm. and a bunch of other topics. And it was a great group discussion where um, everyone got involved, everyone was able to kind of intake and also put out this information mm -hmm. and we're looking forward to having more meetings in the future um like adriana has all the details mm -hmm. so she knows oh, okay. exactly when those will okay. be but i but just do want to a, uh, do you have a place um a location where you are meet we're, we don't, we're not going to put that information out okay no, no no i'm saying but you do have one yes, yes we do okay mm -hmm. all right as long as you have one that's cool. <laughs> well, that's good. We're definitely going to have another um, Black Diaspora meeting, as Samaj said, but we're not going to, we like to have our meetings on Fridays, but you know, next Friday is Juneteenth, which means that we're not going to be trying to even take, it's not going to work because people are not going to be willing to come out on Juneteenth, <laughs> but it's open to the public. Any Black, we like to um, advertise to target audiences, so Black teenagers and Black youth are our target people who we want to come and to have an open conversation but anybody is invited anyone even our allies it's just that allies we like to if we're saying that the 50 people can come 40 people are going to be black people you know that's just how we like we're not we definitely need to hold spaces for our black voices I appreciate that. And to the youth who are watching, whether you're watching now or you're watching um, later on, please reach out to them. Um, yeah. This is a, a dynamic club right here in Jersey City. Um, everyone um, needs to get involved. You you matter. And you know, with this club, they're, they're youth. You don't have to worry about adults. They're your peers. And you, you all speak the same lingo. 
and you all are powerful and, and leaders. So please just reach out, go onto the Facebook page and we will definitely connect you all. Now, do you all have a Facebook page or Instagram page where people can connect with you? Or how can someone connect with you? Chance, give, let them know. <laughs> let them know. Um, uh, the, uh, the Black Diaspora Club is on Instagram. That's where we do most of our promotion. And when people reach out, we reach out much quicker on Instagram through the direct messages. So our Black Diaspora Instagram is black.diaspora. Um, as for personal accounts, I don't know if everybody wants their uh, personal mm -hmm. social media promoted, but um, well, you, have the uh, it's, you have the club. So yeah, they can reach out to you on the club. Yeah. Yeah, so the club, and then when you when you have that interaction with them, if you want to give your personal um, information, by all means. But right now you have Instagram, so please follow them on Instagram. Connect with them. If you can share some resources, if you can make a donation. I got the Cash App. Can I can I read the Cash App? The yeah. Cash App is it's um, Black Diaspora Club, and Vimo. They have that. That one is Black Diaspora Club dash M A H S. I will definitely share it on the Facebook Live, but please pump in some, some, some money, whether it's a dollar, five dollars, a hundred dollars, whatever you can do, because this group right here, this group of dynamic students are making a change. They have brought together 4,500 plus people together for unity, and they continue to strive. So I will give you all my information. You can reach out to me. I want to be part of the club or be up yes, here. Whatever I can do. You are <laughs> more than welcome to join to us. Yes. All right. Well, I'm joining. Well, whatever <laughs> I, can do, I will be making my donation tonight. Um, that's one of many donations. I believe in you all. I've seen yeah. what you've done. So I just love you all. So Thank you. with that, I want you to share any final thoughts with everyone that's watching. Any final thoughts that you would that you would like to um, share? Um, Chance, since um, uh, since Andre always, uh, Adriana always call on you first, so I'm calling on you. <laughs> Chance, you go. Um, just want to give one last a uh, big thank you to everyone who reached out and was willing to help us uh, for the protest on Saturday. We got tons of messages from people asking how they could help, and like. They are honestly like a big part of what made Saturday's protest success. So big thank you to all those people who helped us. Um, be sure to come to our meetings. Um, our meetings are very much a big part of the group, uh, the club in general. You know, we're not just, you know, protests. Our, our club meetings are kind of the center of everything that we do. So uh, if you would like to come to our uh, meetings, I'm sure we'll post a flyer on our Instagram letting you know when the next one will be. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, Eileen. Uh, I just wanna say um, that I'm really happy to be a part of this group. Everyone like on this chat is very inspiring. And um, you know, for my fellow youth, you know, we all have a voice, we should use it. We have platforms we can use you know, ways we can educate others, you know, inform others about what's going on and ways to help. And that we should, you know, take advantage of the fact that we have these opportunities to help. So I feel like we should all do that. Thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to uh, make a special shout out to uh, everyone viewing uh, currently. Just wanted to say thank you and especially to you, Mr. Knight and Everything Jersey City for having us on. So thank you for that. Thank you. Adriana? I just want to end this off by, you know, continuing what Samaj said. Thank you, everyone who's viewing. Thank you, everyone on the call. But I want to make sure that it's very clear that all Black lives matter, right? We have to be intersectional in our advocacy. And I keep saying this, I said this at the rally, and I'm saying this every, almost every time I speak, we have to be intersectional in our advocacy, which means that Black women matter, Black LGBTQ plus people matter, black, black trans lives matter, black everything matters. We cannot be specific in our advocacy and say, oh, well only this type of black person matters. Black people who are not neurotypical matter. P black people who, who are disabled matter. We all matter and we have to treat 
we have to we have to be intersectional in our advocacy and can you to and continue to represent all black lives absolutely and also to everyone who is watching all my black people who are watching i love you guys so much and i and i have so much love in my heart for y'all we have to continue to hold mm. each other up especially in these trying times a lot of a lot of stressful, sad, depressing things are happening. So we have to be able to put a smile on, take a break, log out of social media, protect your mental health. Please, please, please protect your mental health. Black people, I love you. Thanks. Fran? <laughs> I just want to say um, something that we always say in my family, one love. Um, we, we need to do this with one love. We need to bring all our allies along with us. Um, that's the only way we're gonna really get movement. And our activism, like I said, it could be um, through the arts. That's how I normally express myself. Um, right away, you know, when George Floyd was murdered, I, I wrote a poem, you know, I was crying, I was hit in the gut. There are so many ways we can use our voices. And if you look at, you know, people who are filmmakers, people who are, you know, spoken word artists, people who are songwriters, use your voice in whatever ca capacity you can. And please don't drop this ball. I know you won't. <laughs> thank you. So for everyone that's watching, thank you so much for tuning in. I want to give a huge congratulations, a huge thank you to the Black Diaspora Club. You all are rockers. I love what you have done. I love what you will continue to do. Everything Jersey City, thank you so much for hosting us. And again, it's one love. I love you. Blessings and love. And until next time, but don't forget, please reach out to the Black Diaspora Club because they are the ones in Jersey City, youth that are making yeah. a difference. So we need everyone to get behind them because without them, it will be hard for us to move forward. And I love what you said, Adriana. It's everyone. Black lives matter no matter what, whether you're disabled, whether you're gay, wh whatever. If your skin is black, you matter. So from that, take care and thanks again. <laughs>